Hey everybody, how you guys doing? Today's a bit of a different video. A lot of you ask, how do we travel vlog? What gear do you use? How do you edit? And I thought it was about time that we did a series so we can share everything with you. Because me and Jess have been travel vlogging for two and a half years now. We've learned a lot and we want to tell you guys everything. In today's video, we're gonna share with you what gear we use to film and edit our travel vlogs. But first, let's talk about camera gear. For people who are wanting to just get into vlogging and don't have a huge budget to buy camera gear, this is the perfect camera. This is the Canon G7X. Now there is a Mark II version. However, we're happy with the version one. It has a flip out screen, which is perfect because you can frame yourself as well as see if you're still in focus as well. We don't actually use this too often now. We've tried to cut down because I prefer the quality of the camera, which is our main filming camera. But I'm gonna switch to this just so I can tell you more about that. Now the main question we get asked all the time is which camera do you use for vlogging? And the answer is the Sony a7S Mark II. This is the best camera for travel vlogging. Back in the day, we used to have a Canon 5D Mark III and also a Canon 6D. I don't know why we had a backup camera. Honestly, you don't need it. You just need one camera. The reason we sold all our Canon gear to go to Sony is because I feel like Sony is absolutely killing it in the camera game at the moment. Because it is a mirrorless camera, it is compact, it's light, but it still has all the features that you need. It has 4K filming, it has slow motion, it has inbuilt image stabilization, and it also takes really good photos at the same time. So when I'm vlogging, I actually don't use any sort of gimbals or gorilla pods. When you're travel vlogging, I feel like the main area to focus on is to try and be as discreet as possible. Because you're in new areas, new cultures, sometimes you can actually feel uncomfortable when you're vlogging. That happens to us a little bit, but we try to remove that as much as possible. So when I'm vlogging, I hold the camera up just like this. Now the reason I can get away with that is because the camera has an inbuilt image stabilizer in the body as well as the lens. So the camera's gonna do all the work for you. A lot of people out there do use a Gorillapod when they're vlogging, but I find it's just, it brings too much attention to you. And on that second point of being discreet, with sound, as you can see, I don't have any sort of microphone on here. A lot of people use the Video Mic Pro to capture sound. Now, back in the day, I used to do that, but I still felt like it was bringing a lot of attention to me whilst I was vlogging. Instead, I use the audio in the camera, which is still decent enough. Of course, you are gonna get a better sound with the Video Mic Pro, but in the meantime, I'm still very happy with the quality of the sound coming from the camera. However, the best feature I can recommend to you is get these little micro muffs. You're probably wondering what they are. They're my koala ears, I call them. And they just go above the microphones. The reason we do that is a lot of times when you're vlogging, unfortunately, there's wind. Now these stop the wind, or at least try their best to stop the wind. It stops that sound when you're vlogging and it goes over the microphone, which can be so frustrating. This probably stops about 80% of the wind, so it doesn't do 100% of the job, but at least most of the time you're gonna get good quality sound. So the lens that we use is actually a recent purchase. We only got this a few months ago and I've been absolutely loving it. It's the 16 to 35 Sony FE F-stop camera. <laughs> Like that is such a tongue twister. It's the Sony 16 to 35 mil FE F4.0. I feel like that's a fair. So this is a wide angle lens, which I think is the perfect lens, if not the only lens that you need for travel vlogging, because it lets in so much more of your surroundings. So just say you're walking through the jungle, so you can get your face in shot as well as the surrounding. And seeing as you're travel vlogging, you want to show where you are. So the final point that I love about this camera is the continuous autofocus. So just say I'm filming the environment and then I flip it back to my face, it's gonna get your face back in focus almost instantly. So one minor drawback on the Sony a7S II is the batteries. You do have to have a few spare batteries to keep filming over multiple days. I have four batteries in total. So I find I go through maybe one, maximum two batteries a day. However, when you're traveling, sometimes charging, it, you just forget to charge your battery. So having multiple batteries at the ready in a handy sock can be so helpful because imagine being out there in an amazing location like the pyramids and having no battery on your camera. Also with SD cards, I try to get the biggest possible one for the cheapest price. I have a 128 gigabyte here, I have one for the Canon G7X and I have one for the Sony a7S II. Now the reason I have such a big SD card, because I like to triple back up everything. One time we had an issue in Costa Rica where a hard drive malfunctioned and we lost everything. So ever since then, I have two hard drives, each of two terabytes, one is the main and one is a backup. Also having a bigger SD card, it means that the footage is staying on the SD card for longer rather than me having to wipe it all the time. 
That way there's like three different ways that my footage is backed up. As much as we love the wide, it still can't do everything. So we have three lenses in total. First one we have and we bought it with the camera is the 24 to 240. This is a zoom lens. Of course, a wide angle can't get footage that is so far away from us. For example, when you're in Africa and you're wanting to shoot the wildlife, the wide isn't perfect for that. This is where this comes in handy. Also, this is the go-to lens when I'm doing time lapses as well, because usually you want to get a, a, like a semi close up of the sun. This is the one I go for. Third and final lens that we have is this small little lens. This is a 50mm 1.8. So this is the lens we use if we're wanting those beautiful cinematic shots where everything is blurry behind you. With camera gear, when it comes to the f-stop, so this number here, 1.8, the lower the number, the more blurriness you're gonna get. This one's quite cheap. We picked it up for about $350 and it's also super light. I'm actually really happy with the quality of this lens. However, sometimes the focus can be really slow, so we only use it on certain occasions. But this is also great for photography as well. So the camera we use for underwater and action shots is the GoPro Hero 4. I'm not 100% happy with this camera. However, I feel like the GoPro 6 is just around the corner. That's the reason I haven't got the 5 yet. But my sister has it and I've seen a few other vloggers using the 5. So if you have an upcoming trip and you really need a camera, go pick up the GoPro 5 in the meantime. I'm just not as desperate to upgrade this camera just yet, so I'm just gonna wait a few months until the new ones are out. Another question that we get asked a lot is what drone do you use? And this has been one of my most favorite purchases in the last year. This is the DJI Mavic Pro. And ever since I got this, I actually upgraded from the Phantom 3. I fly this so much more, and also I feel like the image quality is so much better at the same time. Once again, with travel, you want to be as discreet and light as possible. This is the perfect drone for that. It does 4K, it does 1080p at 60 frames per second, and this is just my favorite baby. We also bought the Fly More package, so it's a little bit more expensive, however, it comes with everything you need. It comes with this handy travel bag, it also comes with the remote, and it also came with two spare batteries. So the batteries last about 20 minutes, and I find in the real world, I get about 15 minutes out of it. So being able to have two extra spare batteries means you're able to extend to about 45 minutes worth of flight. Also, I picked up these little bags on eBay because it protects the battery. Unfortunately, with the Fly More package, the batteries did just come like this. So being able to transport them and protect them at the same time, these are the perfect bags. So the very last camera that we own is actually a 360 camera. So we have the Samsung Gear 360. This is the older model. They have brought out a newer version, but I felt like I don't need to upgrade just yet. If you guys were interested in doing some 360 footage, I find that this camera is perfect. I'm sure the newer model is even better. However, the drawback with the version one is that you have to have a Samsung Galaxy phone. I think with the latest version you can connect it to your iPhone now as well as some of the newer Samsung Galaxy phones. If you were thinking of doing 360 footage I do recommend it because it just adds a fun interactive way to your videos. Also VR is starting to pick up a lot and I can see it being used in tourism in the future. So if you're needing a tripod for travel vlogging I highly recommend the Gorillapod. The reason why is I actually use it for time lapses. As you can see you can make a nice little tripod. I also love it because you can connect this to trees, bridges, just about everything you have because as you can see it's just twists and just connects onto everything so if you're trying to get a time lapse and of course when you're traveling there can be some crowds and you just found a perfect spot but it's not a flat smooth location this is perfect for that now the final piece of gear I'm going to talk about and one of the most important pieces of gear next to your camera is the laptop that you edit on now I think a lot of you are probably going to end the video here because you think I'm going to say a MacBook Pro but I'm actually not in 2017 and 2018, I feel like you need to switch to a PC setup. Now the reason I think that is last year Apple updated their MacBook Pro, which is the powerhouse in their laptop range. And I just felt like they're all about trying to make it as thin as possible. They've removed a lot of the ports, which is both inconvenient and also takes up more space in your bag because you need to use dongles. But the other reason is because it's so much thinner, they've removed a lot of the power, which made these the prime laptop to edit in back in the day. So what I've actually recently done is left Apple and switched to a PC setup. Now, when you purchase a laptop, I just feel like you should buy one and it should last for at least three to four years and still be up with the times. My old MacBook was amazing until I started editing in 4K. Since I've switched to 4K, I just feel like the MacBooks aren't powerful enough. So I upgraded my laptop recently, and what I've done is I've moved to the Gigabyte Aero 15. The reason I did this was for multiple reasons. The first one, and the major one, is actually price. This is almost half the price as the fully maxed out MacBook Pro 15 inch. The second reason is weight. Because I'm using this for travel videography, I need to keep everything as low as possible. 
and even though this is slightly heavier than the MacBook Pro 15 inch, I still get all the features that I want. It's a bit of a small trade-off, but I still get all my ports, but most importantly, the guts inside of this is way more powerful than the MacBook Pro. So some of the main features you need to look for when buying a brand new laptop for video editing is one, the graphics card. This is packing a GTX 1060, which is one of the top end graphics cards on the market at the moment for laptops. On top of that, this is an i7 processor, as well as 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is crucial for video editing. So I use Adobe Premiere Pro for video editing, and it is ideal to have a lot of RAM in your laptop to make it a smoother process. Back in the day when I was editing on my MacBook Pro, it used to take me several hours to get through 4K drone footage. On the Gigabyte Aero 15, it takes me like 15 minutes. And also rendering time is cut down a lot, which is fantastic because a lot of the time I'm editing late at night, and the last thing I wanna do is wait an hour for my video to export. Now it takes half that time. If you guys were interested in me going through how I edit my vlogs on the laptop, leave a comment below so I know to do that in the next episode. And everything that I have mentioned, I'll put into the description so you can go check it out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and if you were interested in this series continued, you need to let me know so I can tell you everything about travel vlogging. But thanks so much guys, see you next time.